Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to my video on the Victorinox Fieldmaster Swiss Army Knife. You are at the We All Juggle Knives channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a lot of different tasks with the different implements on this. All right, this costs about $35 in the United States. As you can see, it has four layers, so it's uh, intermediate thickness for a Swiss Army Knife. Now, this model is closely related to the Huntsman, which basically has a corkscrew in place of the uh, Phillips on the back. As you can see, it's got a lot of nail nicks as your openers. All right, so what's on this? Well, the three longer tools are the spear point blade, the scissors, and the wood saw. The shorter tools on the front are the pen knife, the bottle opener, the can opener, and two screwdriver ends on those openers. And on the back, we have the reamer awl, the hook, and a Phillips screwdriver. Underneath that Phillips is a hole for a straight pin, but it doesn't come with the pin. And in the handle scales, you got a toothpick, you got tweezers, and that's all. All right, doing stuff with the Swiss Army Knife, using the saw as a striker. Yeah, those shavings are uh, whittling leftovers. All right, so as you watch that, let's just talk about this knife. This is closely related to the Victorinox Huntsman. Uh, the, the main difference is that the Huntsman has a corkscrew on the back in place of that Phillips. Right, however, there is a Boy Scouts edition of the Huntsman that actually uh, does not have the corkscrew. It has the Phillips. So this review is going to apply, a lot of it is going to apply to the Huntsman as well. Right, And there are some arguments for and against the Fieldmaster versus the Huntsman, but basically it boils down to most people who get the the one with the corkscrew are not actually using it for wine. They're finding other uses for the corkscrew. I'll include links to both. Oh, and sorry for the background noise. Not sure if you can hear uh, the airplane, the birds, uh, just the screams of uh, the damned. No, just kidding. All right, uh, using the larger blade, making a notch. And I have big plans for this notch. Oh, yeah. All right, so how are you all doing? Good, hopefully. It was very humid when I filmed this. It was kind of nasty. There's a lot of mosquitoes. They should put mosquito repellent on this Swiss Army knife. That's what it needs. All right, using the wood saw. Now we're making a different type of notch with the wood saw and uh, like a squared off type O notch. Now, in my mind, this is really what the Swiss Army knife saws are for as opposed to... I mean, you can cut, like, small branches with them, too, but they would be pretty small. But it is useful for notches and stop cuts. And it'll also cut down those pesky, like, giant redwood trees. No, no, just kidding. All right, using the blade more. I chose the wrong wood for this, man. That was hard. That was, like, wood I would use to make, like, a spear or something or a club. That, that was, um, yeah, that was some harder wood, but uh, as you can see... Just wait for it. The gloves are coming on. Oh yeah, there, there's the gloves. I have arthritis in my hand and I'm a big wuss. No. One, only one of those is true. It's, it's inherited arthritis too, it's not because of old age. But there you go, my squared off notch, finally. All right, so got the V notch, square notch. Aha, you didn't see that coming. It's a little ghetto knife stand. All right, I figured I would, I would um, use them for something. But this knife performs well. I mean, the saw, the, si the scissors and the reamer are coming up. All right, but the saw, the blade, the pen knife blade is coming up too. All right, but first, the most exciting part of any video, screwing. Lots and lots of hard screwing of a screw on the uh, Kershaw Camp 12. It's a... Uh, a machete and a, a parang. You know, somebody got mad at me one time for not rolling the R on the parang. I guess you're supposed to say it parang. I can't even do it. Look, I'm I'm not a native of Malaysia. I do the best I can. All right. At least I'm close. I'm part Filipino. But all right, here's the now the screwdriver end on the can opener will also fit many screws, including that Phillips screw. Ah, redundancy. Inefficient, no. One is none, two is one. 
So the fact that both of the screwdrivers fit that same screw, that's like solid, bro. No. You know, when you're using that Phillips on the back, it's, it's like a T-handle, so you can apply more force, but it has less clearance. Whereas the, the one on the can opener, you could potentially get into places that the other one couldn't, right? So, all right, I give, I give my blessing to the fact that both fit the same screw. All right, the scissors. You know, it's harder than you might think to make really good small scissors. I know this because I've tried a lot of scissors on cheap multi-tools and other like multi-function knives that weren't Swiss. And it's harder than you would think. Now this thing has paracord, obviously, it's cutting it very cleanly. Uh, Victorinox scissors in general are very precise and very sharp. In fact, I wish they would put these scissors on uh, like Spyderco made like a clip it, I think it was called. I wish they would use Victorinox scissors on that. So here's it, here it is on some cardboard. Uh, why would you want to cut cardboard with scissors? Uh, don't ask that, dude. Now, you probably wouldn't, but the point is, if you wanted to, you could. Now, it was resisting a little because the cardboard was kind of bent, but believe me, it makes short work of cardboard. When I cut cardboard, I, I usually either use a box cutter or some sort of like larger like shears, like shears type multi-tool or my multi-cut but anyway I give these scissors an A plus you can whittle with the pen knife the pen knife comes quite sharp why is it called a pen knife I believe they used to be used to actually sharpen those old-time pens like the quills with the ink pots you know so that's how it got that name but now if you're sharpening a pen with a pen knife you're probably making a shank, which is something that I, of course, would never do. But yeah, look how, I mean, look at the thin little shavings. I save those shavings, usually. I, I, those are the shavings that I use to, uh, to start the fire. Yeah, one tip. If it's hard wood and you have to push real hard, then push on the body of the knife like I'm doing with the push cut with your thumb. You don't want to, if you don't want to push on the spine... If it is uncomfortable, you freaking wussy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, like, enduring pain unnecessarily makes you way more of a man. No, I'm just kidding. It, it doesn't. It's fucking stupid. Oh, did I curse? All right, YouTube. Just use the Amazon links just so I don't have to worry about if YouTube, like, doesn't want to put ads on my... My stupid video. It's like, you know, it's it's just so seditious. Here's the reamer making a hole bigger. I'm great at making holes bigger. Stretch that mother out. Alright, so one use of the reamer. Uh, you can make a lanyard hole. Let, let's say you made, I don't know, some sort of uh, survival club or something. Or spike. Or any sort of tool. You can make a lanyard hole. Now this is a reamer and an awl. Oh, by the way, my strategy is to make like a divot on one side and a divot on the other and then meet them in the middle. So there you go. This is a reamer and an awl. An awl is uh, usually like a leather punching tool and you see this has a hole in it so you could actually use it to sew. And I've never worked leather so I'm not going to demonstrate that. But I, I saw a guy on TV make a... He trapped a beaver, killed a beaver, ate the beaver, took the hide and the pelt of the beaver, like uh, he did something to the hide, and then he used a, he used an awl to sew the the beaver's uh, hide into some gloves. All right, but we're just reaming. All right, so reamer can be used as a hand drill, as you see there. Now, what can you do with that? Well, like I said. You can then put a lanyard through it. You can make a necklace and give it to your girlfriend and guarantee she'll break up with you if that's if that's the birthday present. She won't like it. All right, but we're not actually making a lanyard. We're making a grip, yes. A paracord grip. We just went crazy with this freaking arts and craft project. The things you can do with a Swiss Army knife and a little bit of paracord. All right, if you didn't have paracord, you would have to use some sort of buffalo sinew. I don't know. I'm not that bushcrafty, all right? I'll just buy the paracord on Amazon. 
Well, I'll include a link if you want bulk paracord too. Now it became necessary to put two uh, like stop cuts. You see those two cuts which I, I did those partly with the Swiss Army knife saw. It became necessary to put those there just to prevent the, the grip from sliding up. And then I burned I burned those two ends so it's just nice and secure. So look what we made. Now this could use some sandpaper and a coat of paint maybe but you know it's it's pretty good for just a impromptu little project. Okay, so let's talk about competitors and alternatives to the Fieldmaster. All right, there you see the Fieldmaster next to the Ranger. But before we talk about that, we got to talk about the Super Tinker. The Super Tinker is a three-layer knife. So if you want to go one layer thinner than your Fieldmaster and you don't need the wood saw, you could get the Super Tinker, which is quite similar, but it doesn't have the wood saw. I don't have the Super Tinker, I actually have the Deluxe Tinker, but so you'll have to use your imagination. But I will include a link so you can check the Super Tinker out on Amazon. Now there's also a Victorinox knife called the Evolution 18 that is similar to the Fieldmaster, so I'll include that link. Now if you want to go one layer thicker, right, which means up to five layers, the Ranger, which is pictured there, it adds a layer and that layer has the metal file. And it also has two extra tools on the back, and it does have the corkscrew instead of the, of the Phillips, but mainly it has an extra layer with a metal file. So if you ever find yourself needing a metal file, consider the Ranger. The reason I didn't get the Fieldmaster in the past is because I could pretty much use the Ranger for most of the stuff that I would have used the Fieldmaster. But it's been so long since I got a new Swiss Army knife that I, you know, I was like, hey, I can review this, and it's a good, I mean... $36, I couldn't resist getting the Fieldmaster, even though it's not strictly a necessity. You know, I, I just like collecting Swiss Army knives, and I do use it. Now, in the text description box, I'm going to list a veritable treasure trove of different stuff you can buy for yourself, all on Amazon, uh, Swiss Army knives, and I'm not sure what else I'll include. Um, paracord, the gloves I use, just stuff in the video or stuff I think you might like. All right, and those uh, those links do help support the channel, which is good because uh, YouTube doesn't really they don't really give you good ads on knife and gun videos. So even when they don't demonetize you, they're unofficially doing it by giving you the ads, just the worst ads. It's just my theory, but I checked the analytics, and I'm afraid that is so. All right, this was fire number two. All right, final thoughts. On the Victorinox Fieldmaster, Master of the Field. In my opinion, the Fieldmaster is a good value. Uh, you're getting a lot for $36. I mean, you could buy just a run of the mill uh, China made folder for, you know, American companies that have their stuff made in China, so some of their folders are around the same price. Or you could buy the Swiss knife, which has all these other features that are quite useful out in the field. Right, so I think it's a good value. Swiss Army knives have some haters, you know, you'll get the people that just prefer multi-tools. And then multi-tools have haters too. Well, you'll get the people that don't even like a multi-tool. They want the, just the whole full-size tool chest. You know, sometimes people will say they don't like handguns because a rifle has more range. And you can go in circles with these apples and oranges comparisons. But, you know, the world is not going to end if you buy a Swiss knife. I don't know. If, if your manhood hinges on, like, how, how big your tool is. I don't know, dude. Get a $2,000 uh, set of tools from frickin' Lowe's and carry it around on your back. And then you'll be a man, my son. But there's a, there's a place for everything, uh, except Gerber. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I have a few good Gerbers and a few shrades. Not many, but a, a few shrades from before they went downhill. But my final conclusion, this is one of the better Swiss Army knives. And unlike the thicker ones, it's the price is not excessive. I would especially recommend this if you enjoy bushcraft type stuff, camping, uh... Boy Scouts, Boy, Boy Scout type stuff. You know, they have a Boy Scout edition of the Huntsman, which is very similar to the, these uh, Fieldmaster in tool set. 
But did you hear? It's not called the Boy Scouts anymore. So the Boy Scout editions uh, that Victorinox came out with, they actually outlived the organization that they were for. But anyway, if you made it this far into the video, I salute you. You are a true fan. Leave some good comments. Check out the Amazon links. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.